From the start of production, Skoda cars with the heavier engines, 1.6 liters and 1.9 liters, the cars will be equipped with power-assisted steering. The power-assisted steering function has proportion characteristics. In other words, if the force with which the driver turns the steering wheel is reduced, the effect of the pass steering is also reduced accordingly. As soon as the force acting on the steering wheel is increased, there is also a proportional increase in the servo resistance effect. The level of the servo resistance is dependent only on the amount of the force acting on the steering wheel. When the car is running straight ahead, the server resistance is therefore zero. The pass steering is purely mechanical design without electronic control elements. When parking a car equipped with the power steering, only about 20% of the force which would be needed with the convention steering is required. This makes ease of parking for the older person. The pass steering forms a separate closed hydraulic circuit. The multiple vein pump in this circuit is attached to the engine block by a bracket. The multiple vein pump is connected directly to the pass steering system by a high pressure pipe. The pass steering consists of the steering rack, the pass cylinder with piston, rods and piston, and the control valve. The oil flows returns from the pass steering system along a low pressure pipe. through the hydraulic oil reservoir to the multiple vein pump. The oil pressure rises as engine speed increases, which has the effect of operating the safety valve, which regulates the oil pressure and flow. The safety valve is part of the multiple vein pump. Three multiple vein pumps are used for Skoda cars, depending on the model and equipment. These differ in the method of installation and in their maximum delivery pressure. The most powerful pump has a maximum delivery pressure of 95 bar with a delivery rate of about 6.5 liters per minute. The multiple vein pump operates according to the following principle. The rotor with moving veins and pulleys belt driven from the crankshaft. Centrifugal force pushes the veins out of the rotor against the stator wall. The hydraulic oil is drawn into the void form between the two adjacent veins. As the rotor rotates within the oval cross section of the stator, the veins are gradually pushed in, reducing the volume of the void. The oil is then forced by pressure to exit via the safety valve which limits the pressure and flow to the cylinder of the steering system.
the power system steering is a rack and pinion system. which features a control valve and a power cylinder. The control valve consists of torsion rod, an input shaft, and a distributor valve bush. The rack and pinion steering differs from the standard steering gear in having a higher ratio. A scrupulous cleanliness of all parts is essential when removing them in order to avoid contaminating the hydraulic oil. The hydraulic oil circuit should only be opened in essential cases. The cap of the hydraulic oil reservoir is designed so that it cannot be opened by hand in order to exclude any risk of confusion between the hydraulic oil and the washer system reservoirs. The steering wheel in straight ahead position, car is driving straight ahead. No forces are acting on the steering, engine running. The multiple vein pump pumps the hydraulic oil into the center part of the control valve. As there is no external force acting on the torsion rod, it holds the output shaft in the neutral position against the distributor valve bush. As a result of this position, a pressure balance on both sides of the power cylinder is assured and the hydraulic oil flows through reversible groups of the distributor valve bush back into the hydraulic oil reservoir. Consequently, the hydraulic part of the power steering is in a state of equilibrium. Driver turns the steering wheel, engine running, car turns to the right. The multiple vein pump pumps the hydraulic oil into the center part of the control valve. The torsion rod, which is connected on the one side to the pinion, on the other side to the steering wheel shaft is turned by the force transmitted through the steering wheel within the range of the flexible deformation. In so doing, it produces a rotation of the output shaft against the distributor valve bush. This results in the opening for the pressurized oil feed in the right hand side of the power cylinder being opened. At the same time, the input openings are closed and the output openings in the left power cylinder are opened. The pressure in the right section of the cylinder acts on the piston and moves it to the left. The piston rod is connected to the rack and thus produces a considerable reduction in the steering force required for turning. The hydraulic oil is forced out of the left section of the cylinder through the distributor valve bush and returns to the hydraulic oil reservoir. Driver turns the steering wheel, engine running, car turns to the left.
The multiple valve pump again pumps the hydraulic oil into the center part of the control valve. The torsion rod is turned by the force transmitted through the steering wheel in the range of the flexible deformation and thus rotates the output shaft against the distributor valve bush. Consequently, the openings for the pressurized oil feed in the left side of the power cylinder are opened. At the same time, the input openings are closed and the output openings in the right section of the power cylinder are opened. The pressure in the left section of the cylinder acts on the piston and moves it to the right. The piston rod is connected to the rack and thus produces a considerable reduction in the steering force required for turning. The hydraulic oil is forced out of the right section of the cylinder through the distributor valve bush and returns to the hydraulic oil reservoir. When the steering is turned to full lock, for example when parking or maneuvering, this results in a momentary overload of the hydraulic system. This can produce an increase in the noise level, but this is not due to a fault in the car steering, but it is the result of the safety valve operating and restricting the flow of oil pressure. Should it be necessary to refill and bleed the hydraulic oil when carrying out repairs or when replacing the power steering system, proceed as follows. Before filling the circuit, it is necessary to ensure that the engine is cold. The oil is poured into the reservoir up to the max marking. When pouring in the oil, turn the steering wheel about three times to the left and right. The hydraulic oil reservoir is now filled up again to the max if necessary. Only after this you should start the engine and run it for about five seconds. During this time the multiple vein pump pumps the oil into the power steering system. After the engine is switched off, check the quantity of oil in the reservoir and top it up if necessary. Once again, start the engine and with the engine running, turn the steering about five times to full right and full left lock. Once again, check the oil level with the engine running and top up if necessary. The filling of the circuit is thus completed. Bleeding is carried out when filling the circuit and it is completed once no more air bubbles form in the hydraulic oil reservoir. On no account start the engine if there is no oil in the power steering system, otherwise the multiple vein pump will cease. When checking the oil level, it is necessary to switch off the engine. The oil level must never drop more than 5 mm below the minimum marking. Use hydraulic oil G002000 for filling the pass steering system of Skoda cars. About 0.9 litre is required for filling the circuit. The life of the pass steering system is at least 100,000 km and it requires no maintenance. You can find detailed information regarding repairs to the power steering system in the workshop manual by the number two assembly running gear. The power assisted steering fitted to Skoda cars not only increases the value of the car and the driving comfort, but contributes principally to reducing the forces required for steering. Precise and effortless steering reduces the physical strain on the driver and thus enhances road safety.